I'm back after an awful week, personally. And did the Commanders get better or worse since? Plus, Carson Wentz, Pence and Oat. And what's next on this episode of the Locked On Commanders podcast? Let's go. Our Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, we welcome you aboard, one and all, to the Locked On Commanders podcast. Welcome in, Commanders fans. I'm Chris Russell, and uh, David Harrison is out on this particular episode. He's not feeling uh, well, but I, I want to say this real quickly. Um, first of all, we always appreciate you being with us, making us your first listen uh, each and every day. Uh, David will be back with us shortly. Uh, I'm back after a week uh, off, and, and it was not vacation. Um, unfortunately, a death in my family, very uh, close uh, member of my family. Uh, and it was, needless to say, uh, incredibly rough and um, and tough to deal with, and a lot of um, you know, a lot of uh, tears shed and a, a lot of support from my family. And I appreciate everyone who um, kept my family in good thoughts and uh, who understood that I wasn't taking a vacation during a very, 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 very uh, seismic shifting week, not only for the Washington Commanders, but also in the National Football League. Uh, I want to thank David uh, for doing everything. Uh, while I was gone because I missed the entire week. So, uh, Dave, feel better? And uh, thank you again uh, for uh, helping out. Uh, again, my name is Chris Russell, in case you forgot. <laughs> I am the uh, co-host of Russell and Medhurst on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app. Uh, the Team 980 can be heard throughout the Washington, D.C. area on 980 a.m. And again, worldwide on the Odyssey app, as this particular podcast can also be uh, as well. Of course, you can watch us as you might be doing on YouTube. That's right. Uh, again, David, normally covering the Washington Commanders for SI.com's Fan Nation. All right. So here we go. Uh, and again, I, I appreciate you guys being patient uh, with me as I try and figure some things out uh, in life and kind of prioritize uh, everything. So I haven't been as active on social media, and therefore I haven't weighed in on the Carson Wentz trade just yet. We're going to do that in a sec. Of course, you want to follow us on Twitter at dharrison82, at russellmania621, at LO Commanders. And again, we thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. So obviously, as you know, and David covered well, uh, the Commanders traded for Carson Wentz from the Indianapolis Colts. And I'm just going to come straight out and say, prior to Washington acquiring Carson Wentz, I said on this podcast, maybe not in these words. I know I said it on the radio because people were trumpeting it uh, and blowing it up and making promos out of it, that this was the worst possible case scenario for me, in my opinion, as someone who covers the Washington Commanders. And I've talked about this for months, and I have not hid from the fact that I am not a Carson Wentz guy. I never have been, never will be. Uh, he's going to have to do a whole lot to convince me that I'm wrong. He's been injured a lot. He reportedly in two different spots has not been a great teammate, a great leader. He was lousy in 2020, and he was up and down depending on the week, the game, the quarter, the throw, the sequence, the period in his one and only year in Indianapolis. Guys, there's a lot to like about Carson Wentz. There's a lot not to like about Carson Wentz. And I think everybody understands that. So I'm not saying anything that is unique, but this is what I've been saying for years and certainly for weeks and months on end. As soon as we saw Carson Wentz fail in Indianapolis and the Colts as a team fail in Indianapolis, I don't want to say the writing was on the wall for Carson Wentz to come to Washington, but the possibility certainly was. And again, for me, me personally, I could be totally wrong. This 
out of every scenario was the worst possible case scenario, if I'm being totally honest, and I have to be totally honest. Here's what makes it worse. Ready for this? In my mind, I drew that up as Carson Wentz, the free agent. Like, Washington didn't have to give up anything to get him. <clears throat> Washington didn't have to pay a $28 million price tag for 2022 and potentially more. We'll get into some of that. Washington didn't have to do all that. In my mind, the only way any team certainly Washington was going to get Carson Wentz was after the Colts cut him. And as a free agent, how wrong was I? And that makes this deal for me way worse than I was already fearing, than I was already thinking. Now, again, I hope I'm wrong. I hope that you can all laugh at me and cut this up and blow this up and tell me I'm an idiot and I'm this and I'm that and I'm negative and I'm all this stuff. Listen, I have never been a Carson Wentz guy. Again, he is completely unreliable from a health standpoint. I know he played all 17 games last year, so good for him. Everybody steps in poop occasionally and it doesn't come out smelling awful. It just kind of depends on how you step in it. And the problem is, is while Carson Wentz did play in all 17 games last year, he almost missed the one, the second to last one because of COVID. And he would have missed it for testing positive if the NFL didn't adjust the rules midway through that week. Good for him. He played. But as we know, the Indianapolis Colts completely failed down the stretch, losing at home to the Las Vegas Raiders and then losing on the road at Jacksonville in a win and in scenario in either game, they would have clinched the playoff spot. So we know that even though Carson Wentz did not miss a game, the results were not there. The statistics, depending on how you want to shape them, were there in some ways, right? A three to one, actually a four to one touchdown to interception ratio. Okay. Listen, when you have Jonathan Taylor, who's a great running back and a very good offensive line, granted beat up, there are a lot of inherent advantages that you have that he's not necessarily guaranteed to have here in Washington, at, at least in year one, and maybe not ever. That being said, Wentz played well in some games down the stretch, winning at home against the New England Patriots on a key Saturday night. The next week, another Saturday night, Christmas night in Arizona, a big road win where he made some big late throws to ice that game with injuries all around. So I give Carson Wentz some credit. The problem is, is what happened after that and what happened before that and what happened in between all that. So as we sit here and say, was this a good trade? Did the Washington commanders get better? Or did they get worse? I think it would be irresponsible of me, quite honestly, if I'm being totally honest with you, to say, even though I'm not a Carson Wentz guy and I'm way down on this trade, and this was the worst case scenario of all the scenarios that I could ever think of, including Marcus Mariota, who I'm not a big fan of either, and why would I be? This was the worst case possible scenario, but are they better? Are they better as we approach free agency and the official start this week, the new league year? Yes, they're better. Not by much, but they're better. They're better. Now, as for the reasons why they made the trade, listen, we all know no premier quarterback wanted to come here. We all know that they wanted to lock in a veteran quarterback. We all know that Carson Wentz has got great arm strength, much better arm strength than Taylor Heineke. And he's a probably a better quarterback overall, right, than Taylor Heineke. So if you look at it on paper, it's an upgrade. And of course they got better. The question is, is how much better? In my eyes, they only got slightly better because of what you had to pay for Carson Wentz to get him here. Third round pick, a conditional second slash third, a swap of seconds, and the $28.5 million that you had to pay. 
Nobody was going to trade for Carson Wentz. Zero. Nobody. The Washington Commanders were the only team that said, hey, you know what? We're going to bail you out, Chris Ballard. We're going to bail you out, Frank Reich. We're going to take that off your hands. And we're going to take it all off your hands. And we're going to give you something more for it. Why? Because they're enamored with Carson Wentz's arm strength, the difference between that and Taylor Heineke. They like at one point what Wentz brought from a mobility standpoint. Certainly that is important. Clearly his height is more advantageous than Taylor Heineke. His experience is more advantageous than Taylor Heineke. You know who's played in more playoff games and longer? Taylor Heineke. One full playoff game that Saturday night lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Carson Wentz has played in less than one quarter of a playoff game. Knocked out, of course, because of a concussion, because of an injury for the Philadelphia Eagles against the Seattle Seahawks. And actually, that was his second of last year in Philadelphia. And he played every game that year as well after missing the ends of the previous two years, the Super Bowl year and another playoff year. So I give Carson Wentz credit from this standpoint. He's played full years in two out of the last three years. But that doesn't mean that he's going to stay healthy for the Washington Commanders. We don't know what his body is going to be. We hope, we can hope, right? There's a recent C-track record, two out of the last three years he's played in every game. But before that, there were major, major issues, major issues. Um, I could talk forever and ever about this. David and I will obviously talk about some of the surrounding elements. Listen, the bottom line is, is Washington didn't want to go into this week with bad optics and desperately needing a quarterback. I do get that to some degree. Carson Wentz did address the Indianapolis Colts fan base via a, a message on Twitter and had a portion of it at the end reserved for the Washington Commanders and you, the Commanders fan. Quote, I'm looking forward to getting to Washington. This organization has a rich history and a roster full of talent. I'm going to do everything I can this offseason to prepare for a special season, and I can't wait to see you at FedEx Field this fall. All right, more on Carson Wentz, obviously, as we go along. The new commander's quarterback. Again, I, I owe it to you to tell you this was the absolute worst-case scenario that I could have ever drawn up in my mind, and I don't even know if I could have drawn it up this bad. I hope, I, I hope I'm wrong. I would love to be wrong. My fear is that I'll be right, and my fear is that it'll be just one more step back in – a nonstop quagmire for the Washington Commanders organization at quarterback on offense and just period. All right, coming up next on the Locked On Commanders podcast, what Landon Collins soon to be release allows Washington to do and does it allow anything? That and more. That's next right here on the Locked On Commanders podcast. All right, guys, this is the time of the year where, you know, look, we're two months into 2022. Everybody's kind of given up on New Year's resolutions. We all know they're hard to keep up, right? Eating healthy, working out at the gym. I've been struggling with everything I've been going through professionally and family-wise, right? It is time to get back to the gym, no doubt. It is also time to eat healthy. And that means Built Bar and Built Puffs, they are a big staple of my diet. As a matter of fact, on my way back from Orlando, my flight was delayed almost five hours. Uh, and I had a couple of built bars on the plane, on the plane to get me through. Why? Because airplane snacks stink and they're not good for you and they don't taste good. Uh, if only I had the built puffs, I had the built bars, I had cookies and cream, built bars, and they were melting, but they were melting in my mouth and they could melt in your mouth too. Plus, again, the built bar puffs. They are the first ever protein-infused marshmallow treat that you are ever, ever going to find, and Built has them. Go to Built.com right here, right now. Use the promo code LOCKED15, guys, and get 15% off your order. Again, by using the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. 
All right, guys, we welcome you back to the Locked On Commanders podcast. I'm Chris Russell, once again, flying solo on this particular edition of the Locked On Commanders podcast. Again, David Harrison, a little bit under the weather, uh, but did yeoman's work, so hopefully he's feeling a little bit better uh, as I make my return from the family situation that uh, cost me all of last week. But obviously, uh, you take care of family first, uh, as we always know. So uh, a couple of things that we wanted to get to in this particular uh, segment here uh, and kind of following up from what we opened with with Carson Wentz and by the way we appreciate you guys making us your first listen of the day make sure you're following the Locked On NFL podcast we're Locked On experts covering the biggest stories around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes it's free and available wherever you get your podcasts including this one and including on YouTube so uh, again, over the cap.com doesn't have exact information. It's not the official official numbers, but they're pretty close. They're pretty close. And according to over the cap.com, Washington, the commanders have less than 1.5 million in what they call effective cap space. Effective cap space basically accounts for the top 51 contracts. And you also pull in the rookie allocation money, which for Washington right now, based on the picks that they have, is just shy of $4.5 million. So if Washington has just one point, let's call it exactly what over the cap lists it as, 1.43 million, let's just say 1.5 million, before the Landon Collins deal is made official, the cut, the release, Washington is going to only get a boost of six and a half million dollars in cap savings from the dead money, which would be 9.6 million on the horrible, wretched Landon Collins deal. If only there was somebody that told you live that day on the radio on 1067 the fan, an afternoon drive, how awful that contract was and would be. If only there was somebody, he might be raising his hand right now. Now, if only there was that person that knew it then, hopefully I'm wrong about the Carson Wentz thing. I was sure right about the Landon Collins. And I know he played reasonably well at times when they moved him around into that Buffalo nickel type situation. He didn't want to do it. They didn't want to do it. All this stuff. Doesn't matter. There's a chance, a chance that Washington could save more money this year by designating him a po post June 1st. A salary cap cut, but the problem is you can't use those resources until after June 1st as well. So I expect them to go the traditional route, take the full dead cap hit of $9.6 million roughly this year, save about $6.5 million, just shy of $6.5 million, and again, roughly be dealing with about $8 million of cap space going into free agency. Now, they have 19, 19 players who are set to become Unrestricted free agents. Of course, everybody knows they're not a roster that's set to win. Ron you know, is letting people know that they're 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 better off than they were two years ago, but they're not a roster that is clearly set up to win. All right. I, I mean, just that, that's not that's not the reality of the situation. However, that being said, what we could have is a situation where Washington is able to bring back a couple of their smaller free agents and not really add anybody significant via free agency, maybe work out a trade, who knows, maybe wait until the second or the third tier of free agency when guys are panicking, taking one-year deals, you know, one-year type prove-it deals with maybe a, a LTBE structure, likely to be earned incentives, all of that stuff to get back on the market next year even though the salary cap went up tremendously, right? Washington is not bringing back Brandon Sheriff. I think we all know that. The only way that happens is if Brandon Sheriff gets nowhere near the type of contract he was looking for or expecting, and for whatever reason, signs back on a one-year less than for, It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen, right? But is there a chance Bobby McCain could come back? They're supposedly talking, according to Nikki Javala, 
uh, of Washington Post to DeAndre Carter. I mean, I think we expected that. David and I have talked about that. J.D. McKissick, not sure what's going on there. Cam Sims, Adam Humphreys, John Bostick, Ricky Seals-Jones, Joey Sly is a restricted free agent. Danny Johnson, slot corner. Apparently, they're not going to, according to Nikki, uh, tender a contract to restricted free agent quarterback Kyle Allen. So it looks like that is done. I guess maybe he could come back after that. I'm not sure what the rule is uh, with that. If they don't re- if they don't tender him and then bring him back, I, I don't know. Uh, he would just be a free agent. I think they could bring him back, but I don't know if they actually are going to do that. Right now, it would look Carson Wentz, Taylor Heineke under contract, and then they would bring in a third quarterback unless that third quarterback is Garrett Gilbert, who – you know, of course, joined the team late in mid-November and actually started a game. We'll have to see uh, what happens with that. Joey Sly, again, is a restricted free agent, so you'd have to you know, make a tender or what, what have you. I don't want to go too deep into the woods. The bottom line is, is they don't have a lot of money. And, you know, everybody wants to hit the ground running when it comes to free agency, but Washington's not going to be able to, unless there's a situation, guys, that I'm not seeing, unless they cut William Jackson the third, unless they cut Curtis Samuel, And while dealing with the dead cap money, that tremendous, I I don't think it's going to help. I don't think it's going to help. I mean, we're not, you know, sure, they can restructure some contracts. That might help. That might open up some money. They could get some guys to take pay cuts. That might help. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. That's why we do this show every day and all day so that we can adjust our compass. But right now, the commanders enter in this week's free agency period officially on Wednesday afternoon. And of course, the legal tampering period, which already started at the combine and before that on Monday. Right now, the Washington commanders enter because they spent over $28.5 million on Carson Wentz. They don't not enter with anywhere near the resources that they've had the last couple of years and with the resource that we thought maybe they would have. And by no means have they absolutely locked up the quarterback position in terms of high quality. They've locked up the quarterback position in terms of they're not going to sign a Mitchell Trubisky or Marcus Mariota or Jameis Winston or somebody like that or Teddy Bridgewater. They're not going to do that. But they haven't locked up the quarterback position like where we know surefire, no doubt about it, that position is taken care of. Not now, not short term, not long term, not in any way term. Uh, But that's what you do when you make a move like they made. All right, coming up uh, in our final segment together right here on the Locked On Commanders podcast. Again, with that legal tampering window open, who could they shop for? Is there any bargains out there? There are, but again, they might have to wait to see how the market shapes up, but some names to keep an eye on that could, could possibly be in the interest window for Washington this week. That's next right here on the Locked On Commanders podcast. But first, guys, football, of course, is over on the field for the season, but you know what this week is. It's not only NFL March Madness, it's the college basketball tournament's version of just that. The tournament is on and underway. The brackets are set. The number one seeds, the Cinderella's, the 16 seeds, and all of that. From all the latest odds, totals, player performance props, to every bit of action, you go to betonline.net. It is your number one spot for all of your sports betting needs. Bet Online remains the best spot for, again, all of the sports scores, information, podcasts, and news this season. No matter the sport, it doesn't have to be just college basketball, it doesn't have to be uh, the NFL, NBA, NHL, everything in between, UFC, boxing, and more. Again, go to Bet Online on your mobile device or on the website on your laptop and get in on all the action at Bet Online where the game starts. All right, we welcome you back to the Locked On Commanders podcast. Just wrapping up this particular edition, we thank you again for being with us right here on uh, this first edition of the week. Again, David Harrison should be back with us later on this week. I'm Chris Russell. Thank you uh, again for all your support and for always being with us. The, again, legal tampering window officially opens on Monday afternoon. It's been open, guys. I mean, it's it, it's just one of those dirty secrets, right? So Washington and Martin Mayhew and Rob Rogers uh, and Marty Herney all have a sense of what their pending free agents uh, are looking and, and what they're trying to do, right? We went down a cu- the list of, of a couple of the guys that certainly they would like to have back. They're talking to DeAndre Carter reportedly. We expected that. Doesn't 
we, we don't know if J.D. McKissick, if Cam Sims are going to come back, if Adam Humphreys is going to come back. Some of these situations are going to be certainly fluid. Nobody expects Brandon Sheriff to be back. Uh, Danny Johnson, you'd like him back as a slot corner because he's basically your starting slot corner and did a pretty good job. So who could Washington possibly add this week with so little funds available? Again, we're expecting right now, barring a major change, only around $8 million, but they can make some other things work. So I'm sure certainly they can add some more money to that till. Wide receivers. A lot of people think they're going to add a veteran receiver. Of course, Allen Robinson is out there. Last a free agent, a franchise free agent with the Chicago Bears. Penn State product, 6'2", 215. Didn't have a great year last year, but obviously the quarterback situation does have a lot of familiarity with Mitchell Trubisky. I would think that maybe he would want to go with Mitchell Trubisky to wherever Trubisky winds up. It's clearly not going to be here anymore. Uh, I don't think Allen Robinson is really uh, in the fold. Could Washington add a guy like Juju Smith-Schuster, slot receiver coming off of an injury played year, uh, two years really, and, and a lack of production, but he came back at the end of the season to play in the playoff game? I like Juju Smith-Schuster, but only at the right price. I'd rather sign a Adam Humphreys back, somebody like that, or somebody else at a lower cost and get probably around the same value. So that's not something for me. Bobby Wagner is a guy who a lot of Washington fans clearly want. I think Bobby Wagner is going to be way out of their price range. One name to keep an eye on that a lot of people aren't talking about. Some people, the Washington Post, Nikki Javala mentioned AJ Klein, who played uh, in Carolina for Ron Rivera. Certainly that is Jordan Hicks, former Eagle, been with the Arizona Cardinals the last couple of years, wanted a trade out of Arizona after they took Zayvon Collins uh, and a linebacker in two in the last two years in the first round. Kind of sounds familiar, right? Uh, well, Jordan Hicks, all he did was not get traded, win his starting job back, and last year had 118 tackles, four sacks, uh, also played 96.3% of the team's snaps uh, over – his three seasons uh, in Arizona. So, you know, again, reliable. He got mad or was perturbed, rightfully so, and then buckled down, snapped on his chin strap, and got to work. Again, a career-high four sacks last year, five passes defended, been good against the run, a uh, 76.2 pass rush grade from pro football focus. Another name uh, that could help them at linebacker is Nicholas Morrow. Jack Del Rio had him in Nick Morrow's rookie year in Oakland. Uh, Washington reportedly was interested in him last offseason. He went back to Oakland. He missed the entire year with an ankle injury. He was trying to get back for the playoff game uh, in Las Vegas or in Cincinnati for Las Vegas. He was designated to return, but they didn't activate him. Nick Morrow would be a very affordable middle linebacker fit that Jack Del Rio has some comfort and familiarity with. Another name that uh, Nikki Javala uh, threw out there was Alexander Johnson, who's been with the Denver Broncos. Uh, James Daniels is a right guard offensive line uh, free agent to be. Again, has some familiarity with Juan Castillo, the new tight ends coach. Uh, when Juan was in Chicago, again, I think he's going to be probably too rich. I'm fine with Wes Schweitzer and some combination of Sadiq Charles or Tyler Larson or somebody like that. Another name that you might want to keep an eye on, Eric Rowe. Eric Rowe, a safety slash corner from the Miami Dolphins, can cover in the slot, can walk down, versatile, can stop the run, has good coverage skills. A uh, seven-year veteran, I think it is. I don't know if Miami's going to give him up, but they drafted a kid, Holland, in the second round last year. So you'd kind of think maybe uh, kind of move on from him. And if he becomes available, Blake Martinez, uh, who has been with the New York Giants and, of course, started his career with the Green Bay Packers. Just some names for you to keep an eye on this week as officially free agency opens up on Wednesday afternoon. But we'll start getting leaked deals as we go along. All right. That is going to do it for this particular episode of the Locked On Washington Commanders podcast right here on the Locked On Network, your team, each and every day. Once again, I'm Chris Russell. Thank you guys uh, for being with us. Before we say goodbye, we want to make sure that you guys know that while you're always welcome to make us your first listen of the day, make your second listen the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. Ryan Tracy, former NFL cornerback, Eric Crocker, 
bringing the NFL draft to life each and every day with insightful and analysis, uh, insightful insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front office. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. We'll be back later on in the week. If you want to hop in, locked on a Washington commanders at gmail.com or Dial us up on the voicemail, 301-615-3577. That's 301-615-3577. For David Harrison, who, again, is out for this edition but did yeoman's work while I was gone, thank him, appreciate him. Uh, he is covering the Washington Commanders at SI.com's Foundation. I'm Chris Russell, one half of the Russell and Medhurst Show on the Team 980 with Pete Medhurst. If you're out and about, be safe, be kind, drive slow, take care of one another. Thank you for joining us right here. On the Locked On Commanders podcast.